Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're doing NAS 101. What is a NAS? What are they for? And how do you build one? Scott, you want to tell us a little bit of what a NAS is before we get into what we got here? Yeah, so uh, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. So essentially you're attaching a hard drive, basically like one of these, to your network. So then you can access all of, like, any of that information on those drives in connected to any of your network around the house. Scott, what do we got here? Uh, so we have right here my grandparents' old computer. So I built them a, a nice custom computer, and so this is their <laughs> old one. Um, as you can kind of see, it's not exactly the greatest condition. This was my my NAS that I had. Great cable management. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, so right now I do have uh, two red drives. Um, uh, by Western Digital. Can you, uh, before you go on, can you just explain really quick what a red drive is? A uh, red drive essentially are drives specific for NASAs. Um, they're uh, rated for 24-7 use, mm -hmm. and these ones are actually 72 RPM, 7200 RPM, so they're a lot faster, so you can, if you transfer something over or take something out, it's a lot faster transferring. So the cable management really isn't that great. Um, I've got a SSD in there running a program. The uh, NAS that I'm running on there, the operating system is called FreeNAS. So I've got a USB that's kind of somewhere in there, hidden. It's probably It's somewhere. janky. <laughs> it's janky. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to completely gut this, uh, put a new server board in there, uh, put uh, all different drives on there. We're going to keep those drives, put two more drives in there, and then we're going to put them all in. The other thing that I'm adding in here, uh, so right now I've got an AMD uh, process in there. I'm actually running an Intel Xeon, which is made uh, more uh, more for like workstations and like 24-7 use compared to like an i3, i5, i7, which are more gamer related and stuff like that. Um, and then also my RAM is um, ECC RAM, which is air correcting RAM, so essentially if the drive has a spot in there that's bad, it will actually, that RAM will actually go and try to correct that spot instead of like normal RAM where it's just like, I don't even care. So can you tell me the frequency of this RAM? What, um, what do they read it at? I, I think it's like 1600 RPM. Or RPM. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, 1600, uh, 1600 megahertz. So, I mean, it's, not not too bad. It's DDR3. So it's uh, 16 gigs, mm -hmm. uh, two 8 gig games on the on there. So uh, I mean, I have four slots on this board. So actually, I could even run two more. Um, but 16 gigs should be more than oh, enough yeah. for I mean, uh, just I'll, a NAS. I'll be. Uh, I, I've got um, a program called Plex, which we'll get into in maybe another episode. Um, but essentially, I'm gonna. Ha I have movies and other stuff like that that people can access, so I do need quite a bit of RAM for people to be able to access that. Uh, so I also wanted to draw the attention, you uh, you mentioned the processor you're going to use, which was the <laughs> Intel Xeon. Mm -hmm. um, with a processor like this, um, you're going to need some pretty good cooling power. Yep. So I, I'd like to bring up the, uh, the cooler you brought in. Okay. Now this cooler might look a little familiar if you guys watched our last video, uh, when we did a complete overhaul on my computer. This was the exact same cooler that was uh, equipped on my computer, and I gotta say, it's actually a really good cooler for the price that you're gonna oh. pay. Uh, I believe this thing was only like what, about twenty to twenty-five yeah, dollars. Yeah. yeah, and I mean it. It does a really <laughs> good job, and it's there's no sound. It is virtually silent. So, I mean, it, as a NAS, it doesn't really matter if it's quiet or but, not. But still, it, I mean, for the for the sake of just not never wanting to hear it. This would be your best bet, the Hyper 212 Evo from Cooler Master. Also, it's worth mentioning what we have to run all of this equipment. Yeah, so actually, it's a uh, CX uh, Corsair 650 uh, watt power supply. A little bit overkill, just like our last episode with his build. 1000 watts. <laughs> <laughs> but this is on sale uh, on Newegg uh, for like 20 bucks. My question to you is, uh, with having all of this good stuff, mm -hmm. What are we gonna do? Let's build this NAS! Let's do it!
We got the motherboard in, right? Yeah. And we installed that processor right on in there. Oh yeah. See, but my question is this. There's a, there's some question going around around how much thermal paste you should put on when securing a cooler to your processor. Mm-hmm. You want to uh, you want to kind of try and clear that up a little bit? Um, so it doesn't really matter too much. I mean, you don't want like a whole lot, but you also don't want like too little. Too right? little, because then it won't be able to spread out. But uh, normally what I do is I do just a little, a little bit, about a size of a piece of rice, maybe a little bit bigger. So or like yeah. a pea. About a grain of rice, huh? Yep. huge mess later we came up with something that I think we can be pretty proud about huh yeah I mean this uh, this note definitely started to take shape <clears throat> yep it's uh it's a little, the cable management's definitely gonna come once we get everything put together yeah, I mean it's as you not can exactly see, the prettiest uh, can you turn it real quick not the prettiest sight see what I'm saying so cable cables could use some help, but <clears throat> we're uh, we're just gonna go ahead and give this thing our first test fire. So Scott, do the honors, dude. This is your NAS. Hang on. Like right, hang on. Right, right. Uh, right, right, go a little right. low. Right there. There we go. Three, two, one. It would help if the power supply was turned on. <sighs> oh my fuck. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right, take take two. Let's try it again. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's right. Three, two, one. <clears throat> oh starting up. man, dude, it's doing it. Dude, it's doing what NASA should do. Oh yeah. Well, we need to hook up a monitor so we can actually tell, but <clears throat> it's it's doing it. Got some things going on. Oh, and two, you can. Control the, the fan speeds you want to. Oh, is that a little switch right there? Yeah. Very nice. Outstanding. How, good airflow? Oh, yeah. Good airflow. So, this build right here took about, give or take, about two and a half, two, about two hours. Two and a half, two and a half hours. Or two to two and a half hours. Maybe three. Yeah. Possibly. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, it went together a lot smoother than I anticipated, you know. We didn't have any problems posting, it fired right up, we took care of the cables, it's all nice and neat, and I'm really happy with the way this little thing turned out. And the most important thing that I like about it is that it's absolutely silent. You won't hear any sound from this thing, it'll just be in the corner of your room, you can even put it in a closet, <clears throat> all your data will be stored, no sound. So my question would be this, so we're going to wrap this build up. What are the pros and what are the cons so far? Uh, do you have you seen, noticed any pros or any cons um, with the case or with the entire build in general, or just in the case in general? Because of the fact that I'm running um, six four terabyte drives, it gets a little cramped in there with all, all the cables and stuff like that. Agreed. Um, the, uh, I mean, there's probably a lot more a lot of room for cable management, but because it's uh, a NAS and it really doesn't need to have that like amazing with cable management. Yeah. I, I don't really care too much. Um, but I mean, it's silent. It does what it needs to do. Uh, I like how the, the drives are just like perfect. perfect. And I mean, everything fits perfectly. So you know, I would say in a way that the snugness of this build and of the whole entire construction of this case, I would say it's a pro and a con at the same time. Yeah. Pro because, I mean, if it's small, you want it in the corner, you don't want to mess with it. Con because, uh, for example, if your battery on the motherboard goes out, you're going to have to remove your drives, you're going to have to disconnect everything, you're going to have to remove the cooler off of the CPU, 
you are going to almost have to gut this thing in order to get it because it is so snug underneath there. Okay. So unfortunately, that's a con for me. I, there's nowhere, there's not a lot of room to work, but like I said, pro as well. Small. <laughs> Small. All right, so I have six drives in here right now. So um, I have four, four terabyte drive total of 16 gigs of actual storage itself. And then I'll have another two drives there for redundancy and stuff like that. So I can have up to two drives fail in this entire RAID array. So I'd be running RAID 10. And then that allows me to have two drives fail potentially and still be able to just put another drive in and have it completely rebuilt. So Scott just went on a uh, cruise to Alaska. And I mean, when you go and you take these pictures, I mean, you only get one shot. So if the data ever gets lost by a hard drive malfunctioning or if, a, say, you put it on a flash drive or something like that, I mean, it's gone. Oh, yeah. But I mean, if you put a backup on your computer and you can do it on a net, I mean, it's just, it's that much more precaution and it keeps your, your data and all your storage that much more safe. And yeah. that's why photography or video or anything like that it is practical to want to invest in a NAS or at least start thinking about your own, in a sense, personal plan. Although, last video we made a complete rebuilt computer with modern specs. This video we created a an awesome cloud storage. Next week's video that we have, or not next week, but the next video we have coming up, it's going to be really interesting. It's um, it's the biggest build we've ever done on the channel or just in general for me, and I think you can say yeah. the same for yourself. <laughs> So without giving too much away, um, it's the most expensive. Build. The most expensive build, and that's not clickbait. I mean, <laughs> we could honestly say that this is over a ten thousand dollar PC build. So keep that in mind for next video, and we'll see you then, guys.